Welcome back. This is tutorial number two of our holiday prop lighting tutorial. So in this tutorial, we are going to be going through how to slice and print your pixel props. In the first tutorial, which is the link you can see right here, we went through how to make and design this. So we built this in Fusion 360. Uh, if you just left that tutorial, we were just uh, at the dialog where you can click OK and save the file. We saved out in STL and I am now in Ultimaker Cura. So Cura is a slicer. I'm going to assume for the nature of this tutorial that you are familiar with Cura or your slicer and familiar with your 3D printer and that you have a working 3D printer. So we're really going to optimize and focus here on how we can print better, how we can print faster. So as uh, said here in the video, I am going to show you how for 50 cents you can cut your print times in half. But before I show you that, if you would do me a favor and just like, subscribe, smash that like button, it's a small price to ask. Uh, plus the 50 cents, but that doesn't go to me. All right, so this is our prop. I'm going to just select it here and go to rotate, and we're going to just put this flat on the bed. So I'm going to do that first. So go to a nice 90 degrees, and boom. Um, what you'll immediately notice is that if you have a smaller printer bed, I have a 300 by 300, but if you have a 220, uh, you might see that this bit is hanging off the edge here and you're not able to actually get it to print. So to fix that, what you do, because the way this is designed, you're just going to rotate that. You're going to rotate it 30 or 45 degrees. Um, then what you're going to do is in your slicer settings, you're going to turn off the brim uh, and skirt. So you don't want either of those. So it's not going to do that outline around the whole model, but then suddenly you will see that this model does indeed fit on the Ender 3 as well as other smaller printers. Okay, so how do we get this to print faster? And how do I print my models really fast? Well, the way we do this is with math. And not just any math, we do it with area. So your stock 3D printers almost always come with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. This nozzle is great. It's wonderful if you're printing a Benchy, and it is fantastic for making nice detailed models, and it has an area of 0.13 millimeters squared. So, well, turns out they sell other nozzles, and they're cheap, at least they can be. And I always print all of my holiday lighting props with a 0.8 nozzle. I paid 50 cents for it. You can buy them in a pack. See, right here. Here's an example of an 18 pack of them for $9. Well, that's 50 cents a nozzle. It comes with 2.8s as well as a variety of other sizes. And well, what's the big deal? Well, you're not just doubling your size. You're actually going to four times the area. So you're putting down four times as much plastic as the head moves around the print bed. And that has a couple of specific advantages. One of them is you can put down thicker, stronger layers so your model will be stronger. The other is that you can increase your max layer height. So the same model with basically the same settings would take almost 11 hours to print with a 0.4 nozzle, but with a 0.8, we cut it down to five hours and 36 minutes and we get a stronger, better print. Pretty awesome for 50 cents. Um, there are more expensive nozzles you can use, certainly. Um, you could look at going up to a, uh, a one millimeter nozzle. What I will say is a lot of stock 3D printers, especially uh, consumer grade and lower end printers, um, are gonna have a hard time actually extruding it at one millimeter. Um, the hot ends just can't keep up with the temperatures needed, to, especially to print PETG, which is what I like to print in at that. So you also have to slow down a lot to print it at, at one millimeter. So I found, at least for me, that 0.8 millimeter nozzles are the perfect balance between uh, size and speed. All right, so we're going to come back here into Cura. Um, I've used Simplify 3D, Cura, I've used um, Prusa Slicer. All of them have their pros and cons. For the sake of this guide here today, we're going to go through Cura. We'll actually go through in a moment the actual slicing settings, but I'm just going to hit slice here and get this going real quick. And you'll see, this actually doesn't take long to slice at all. And yep, there we are. 
five hours and 20 minutes. Even better. And actually, when we see on the off, off the printer, we'll have the real time as well. So I'm going to go over to preview real quick and take a look at this. So what's neat is, because our layer height is actually 0 0.48, we're only printing 32 layers. That's super few. That, that, that prints really, really quick. As opposed to we would be double that if we were with a 0.4 nozzle. As well as, you can see the thickness here of our walls. Just by putting down these two walls, we have the equivalent of setting to four perimeters. Plenty stiff enough. Should, you know, will hold up as an outdoor prop in general. Uh, we've got our infill set up here. Being a little bit aggressive to put a fair amount of infill down, but part of the reason is is that we have these uh, very nice fillets that come and curve around here, and while th those are pretty, they do cause a little bit of uh, problems sometimes when you're trying to do those first couple of, of solid top and bottom layers. We can also get away with only having two uh, bottom layers and two top solid layers with a 0.8 nozzle. You should really be at three or four of those with a uh, 0.4 nozzle. And you can see here when we get to the little detail bit, it's going to not quite struggle, but it's definitely going to have a little bit tougher time as it goes through that. And then we have our little two-tier edging here, and then our last couple of layers, if you notice, from 20 and above, it's just doing some really quick ringing with no infill. So those should print really fast. So this is a standard, you know, print setup for me. The new lightning infill is pretty nice, but this is a very standard infill. Um, we're going to open up the settings and take a little deeper look at what we're actually running here. And I'm going to explain to you why I have some of these things set the way that I do. This is a modified profile. I will include this uh, profile in a uh, 3DMF uh, file. You'll start to see these uh, 3DMFs or 3MF files a little more often around. It's 3D manufacturing file. It's kind of a newer version of STL, it's a way to think about it, and it actually includes the print settings, which is a huge win, uh, whereas STLs, being a much older format, don't include a lot of information of how to print. So, as we said before, we're going to do 0.48 for our layer height. Um, we're going to be doing an initial layer height that's actually a little bit thinner, which is the reverse of what some people, most people actually normally do. Um, but I have found, at least for me, getting the PETG uh, material to stick. This is what works well for me. I am using a uh, CR10V2 slash V3 with a direct drive Titan extruder. So uh, my settings for retraction will be noticeably different if you are versus someone using like a Bowden tube system. So if you've got the long plastic tube, then your retraction settings are going to have to be noticeably different. Um, but as I said before, we're doing just a few layers on these things. Our walls are just two. It's very, very simple. Same two top layers and two bottom layers. Um, if I was with a smaller nozzle, I would want those to be higher. I'd probably do four and four. Um, infill, a simple 30% with trihexagon. Uh, there are some of the fancy new ones like lightning that actually look pretty cool and do work really well, but 30% will do you. And if you're in a real hurry, you can actually lower that even further. And there's some tricks that you can do to make sure that the uh, top edges print really nicely. Um, temperature. This is going to vary depending on your filament. Um, for me, I use Polymaker Polylight PETG when I am printing my uh, outdoor holiday light props. I have had really good success with that particular brand. They don't sponsor me or this channel or anything, but that's just the brand that I have found that works well consistently on all my printers, um, as well as I have a consistent set of temperatures that work for it. I know the settings that work. So once I kind of decided after trying several different filaments that this one works really well and I got the settings nailed, I haven't really had to go and change them, and that makes things a lot easier. So in this case, I'm printing it at 233 degrees. Um, but I'll let the printer actually get started at 230. And I have my plate at 75 degrees, so I tend to run the plate pretty hot. Um, I'm running on a textured uh, sheet, and we'll jump when I actually get to the printer, you'll see how all of that goes. I'm not printing the PETG on a PIE sheet, because that tends to get very, very stuck. So this uh, textured sheet works just fine. Speeds. Uh, You'll notice I'm actually going relatively slow here. Um, not super slow, but 30 millimeters a second. It's definitely not a speed demon. 
Um, some of that's just the PETG, and some of that's the fact that I'm running a 0.8 nozzle, and I have to compensate for the fact that I can only heat up the filament so fast at that large of a diameter. Um, you start to really deal with physics and flow here. So the, the larger the diameter of your nozzle, the more material having to heat up quickly, especially if you're trying to extrude faster. So if you start hearing your extruder clicking, uh, that means you're printing too fast or trying to because it's actually not able to melt the plastic quick enough. So the hot end is staying at temperature, but it's actually not heating the filament all the way through. And it's just kind of trying to extrude too, uh, it's uh, too viscous, too thick while it's trying to extrude. Um, I really like to have um, a couple of interesting travel and, um, and retraction settings. Um, specifically, there is this uh, Z-hop when retracted. Um, that's pretty fun. The thing with this thing is this Z-hop height. I actually like to set this to the same as my layer height. Now, why? And we'll reslice. slice um, that's done. Well, the thing is, I have found that my PETG expands just a little bit as I'm printing, just, just the exact you know leveling configuration of my printer. So when I've got a retraction and I've got to have the print head move pretty far across it, I don't want to bump into anything, I don't want to scrape the surface or change it, you know, or even mar the surface. So I find that just jumping up a layer and sliding, it can slow your print down a little bit. You see here we added a tiny bit of time. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but it definitely does prevent uh, collisions. So I think that is a generally worthwhile setting. Um, with PETG, uh, oftentimes you actually don't want the fan on. Uh, and in this case, I do not run with the fan with this. However, on different printers with the same filament, I actually print hotter with the fan on. So, but it's with a different bed material. So you'll find that these things are all kind of flexible. All right, and all that's, so that's it. That's all my settings. I'm gonna just save this file to disk and uh, go load it up on the printer and we'll go, go take a look and watch that print. This is the Polymaker Polylite PETG that I like to use. I have gone through a few dozen of these spools in both white and clear, building my light show out this year. This stuff works fantastic. It seems to be holding up very nicely outside this year and we'll continue to see over the years how it holds up. But in terms of what prints well on the printers and seems to be pretty reliable, this is the stuff I'm using. As we watch this beautiful montage footage of my uh, CR10 printing here, let's talk a little bit about, well, printing. So the whole art of printing is melting plastic onto these flat layers and stacking them up. So one of the goals of our layout in Cura was to make sure that we had nice, strong layers. You want to make sure that your base layer is as strong as possible, your, your infill. But also, we want to balance our print time with our strength. So here, we are giving just enough infill that we're going to have a strong prop, but not so much that it's heavy. And only about 130 grams of plastic, we can make quite a few of these out of a one kilogram spool. On top of that, at just a five hour print time, we can actually make three to four maybe even sometimes, you know, five of these in pretty quick succession. You know, it should be relatively easy for most people to get at least two of these out in a day plus one overnight. So you very quickly have a lot of props for your light show. Boom, we're done. Five hours, six minutes, and one second to make this very nice spinner prop. Thanks for joining. Make sure you click like, click subscribe. Let me know if you liked the video. Leave a comment even if you didn't like the video. But we're going to go and make some more videos. So the next video is going to be coming up shortly. And you should see a link to it right here above in this tutorial series. So here is our 8-inch finished prop.